Hi everyone, Josh Gilbert here and welcome to Stock Break, where I give an in-depth analysis on public companies in under five minutes, breaking down their fundamentals and potential valuation. So let's dive in. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Stock Break. Today we're going to be looking at CSL. It's a biotechnology company listed on the ASX 200. We'll dive into their fundamentals and see what analysts think about the stock. So stick around to the end to find out. But before we get started, a quick reminder that this presentation is for educational purposes only. It should not be taken as investment advice or a recommendation to buy or sell any financial instrument. So on to CSL. Uh, it is branded a bit of a market darling here in Australia, delivering extensive returns for investors over the last 10 years. The business primarily operates in three key segments, and that's quite important to understand. They have CSL Bering, they have CSL Securis, and CSL Vifor. And to be quite frank, it's not the easiest business to understand. Um, they can be quite, you know, quite, quite complex, um, but in short, CSL Bering, um, this is its largest revenue contributor, um, and it makes life-saving plasma-based therapies. Then we have a CSL Securis. This provides flu vaccines globally. And then we have CSL Vifor. This focuses on treatments for kidney disease and iron deficiency. And look, the business has asserted itself as one of Asia's most prominent pharmaceutical companies. They've built a reputation for innovation and excellence. However, it does face stiff competition. It has other major players in the biotech space and the pharmaceutical world is pretty busy and there are lots of different segments as well. But if we look at the bearing unit in particular, as I said, this is the main revenue contributor. Its main competitors are Grifles and Takeda. Takeda is a Japanese uh, pharmaceutical business, but CSL is well positioned though. They own around 30% of the world's plasma collection networks. So now onto its fundamentals. CSL handed down its four year results at the start of August and numbers came in pretty good. Revenue beat expectations coming in at 14.8 US billion dollars. It was up 11% from last year and net profit on a constant currency basis rose 25% to 2.75 billion. And importantly for shareholders, its dividend grew again. Uh, it paid out $1.45 per share, signaling 12.5% growth from last year. Um, its bearing unit was the standout. It had increased collections, driving growth and helping to reduce costs. Um, they did offer, though, a slightly uninspiring forecast for the fiscal year 2025. They signaled revenue growth between 5 to 7 percent and profit growth of between, between 10 to 13 percent. This is much softer than the growth this year and below analyst estimates. And this guidance felt slightly conservative, especially with the plasma business delivering um, and looking set for continued growth. I think that's really important to, to mention. It is a vital component of the business. Um, its new Riker system should also continue to drive plasma collection, helping decrease the time needed to collect donations, which also should help margins as well. So keep an eye on that Riker rollout over the next 12 months. It's going to be really, really important. Um, and also just a quick look as well at its earnings. This is really, really important. Earnings growth has continued to rise um, over the last few years. We, we sort of had a, a bit of a stagnation between 2020 and 2022, but importantly, picking up again now into 2024. Um, now to its valuation. It's trading at around 30 times forward earnings. Although that is not cheap, that doesn't look completely stretched, particularly if it can outperform what we see as slightly lower guidance. Uh, US rate cuts are also inbound. We've got plenty of rate cuts coming from the Fed, uh, which would more than likely see the US dollar drop and provide a bit of a, a tailwind for CSL. The business generates a large portion of revenue outside of the US. Uh, so again, you know, a, a drop in the US dollar would be positive for the business. The Guru Focus Tracker also sees the stock as modestly undervalued, and that is because it is in a high growth part of uh, the, the market. Um, it is in biotech. And, and again, you know, we can see a, a lot of growth in that sector. Uh, and it also ranks its profitability 10 out of 10 as well. To the analyst side, well, given the company's continued growth, they are bullish. CSL has 13 buy ratings, four holds and no sales with an average price target of 324 Australian dollars. Look, CSL isn't immune to increasing competition, but it is a high quality business that has delivered for investors over the years. It has also continued to grow its dividend as well and pays out a very nice yield. So look, the biotechnology space is certainly an exciting one to watch. They continue to dominate the plasma market uh, and it looks like CSL has plenty of growth ahead. Uh, and that uh, sort of full year guidance in our view 
was slightly light and we think that that can be beaten in the full year. So there should still be positivity ahead for CSL. That's it for uh, CSL. Thanks for watching Stock Break. Let me know in the comments what you think of CSL and we'll see you here next time.